Before we begin, I want to get something out into the open. The wool is not warm and sweaty ever. It's always the right temperature and extremely comfortable to sit on, which is likely why they've been using it in planes since 1930. The newest Monster Tech flight chair is covered with sheep wool. Monster Tech heard the community and dedicated a bunch of research to find a way to offer this properly. Monster Tech is calling it the Flying Sheep, the MFC-7, Monster Tech Flight Chair Number 7. Don't forget, you can get all of these chairs with custom fabric or logo just by contacting them directly. They'll show you all of the available custom options in an email to help you. Everything is linked in the description with promo codes for you. There are no kickbacks to me if you buy things. I've ensured that these codes are only there to get you the nicest discount for watching my review. I have a full review of the MSC-1 that I did quite some time ago posted up for you right now. It's highly detailed, speaking about assembly and how to operate the controls. This chair is mostly like the others, and I hate redundancy. If this is the first time you've ever heard of these chairs, or if it's new on the market to you, it's my suggestion to watch this, but then please go watch the other so you have all of the information. That will also be linked for you. It's the best way to get a complete understanding of why these chairs are unique and what it means to own one. We should begin with a brief history into how and why Monster Tech started making their own chairs. They had great success with their desk mounts. This led to several generations of chair mount systems that were meant to be used with off-the-shelf chairs. These were fine, but what would be better would be a chair designed from the ground up to serve this purpose. This would be MFC and later MPS, which is the same chair but used for simulation rigs such as MTS. My MFC-1 was the original prototype and I've sat in it daily with no signs of wear or issue. Even when I deployed to Kuwait for six months, my wife wasted absolutely no time misappropriating my chair for her office. It's been a fantastic office chair with great comfort and ergonomics, but it has a lot more to offer. Some unique specialized features just for us sim pilots are the following. Five locking casters as an option and an industry first locking gas shock as an option. When flying with pedals, these both will allow you to not only remain in place, but to not pivot around, resulting in a solid base to enjoy flight from. Your MFC becomes a mini sim pit. The thick hardwood base ensures no flex, but unlike metal, it won't develop a creak over time. The base is pre-drilled with metal inserts to attach all of the extras, such as armrests. The base is pre-drilled to accept a custom left, middle, and right attach points for use with removable mounting hardware for flight controllers. You can convert from work to flight in about 90 seconds. These will give you the freedom to change from HOTAS for flight, right collective and center cyclic for flight, dual stick for space. These mounts have optional extras such as mouse surfaces, extra panel mounts, anything where you might need it. You won't need to compromise and fly your F-18 with a side-mounted stick. You won't need to compromise and fly your F-16 with a center-mounted stick. I'm going to stop talking about the chair because it's fairly obvious that this chair is going to accommodate any configuration that you can dream up. The newer MFC-7 compared to my original MFC-1 has been optimized. The foam, the base, and the stitch work have been refined a little bit more. The sheepskin part is not a chair cover. This is a part of the chair itself. It'll never bunch up or move because it can't. You might be like, hey Nubifire, the chair looks really funny. What's all the big fuss about? Won't it get dirty? Will it smell? Won't it get sweaty? And no, it's perfect. And for that, I have a special treat. Sven, who you might remember from Real Pilot Fake Plane, is a veteran pilot who flew AWACS B-52 and then migrated to fly commercial with FedEx for over 30 years in flight. He saw a photo of flying sheep and he just thought it was the absolute coolest thing ever. I interviewed him to ask a subject matter expert why it was special and I'm going to close out this video with our conversation, but also at the end, my final comments. There are timestamps and please give me feedback if this was a good segment, if you liked the special segment. Here we go. And uh, honestly, I think your your input was kind of the the linchpin for the whole video because I could talk about I could talk about the whole fuzzy seat, uh, but without your experience, it doesn't really matter. So, ladies and sure. gentlemen, who we have on the line today is Sven, and Sven was uh, part of that real pilot fake plane video that we did uh, probably two or three months ago at least. And what we're going to be talking about today is what Monster Tech is calling flying sheep, and it is a real uh, sheep wool skin cover on the chair but it's not just a cover it's actually built into the chair and uh, I know Sven that you've been a huge fan of flight and flight history so can you tell me why why this is on planes and why sheep covered chairs have always been a thing on on planes uh, the I'll, everything I can offer of course is just anecdotal in my own experience so 
I have almost every airplane I've flown uh, while I was in the military. Once you get to big transport category aircraft, not necessarily, you know, the smaller trainer types, they have seats like this. And it's a iconic symbol of Boeing aircraft. And <laughs> I think they went with it because it's a very durable, it's leather with fur on it. It's comfy. It keeps your butt warm. It kind of meshes into it. You know, it's over the foam. And of course, uh, you know, the, the air conditioning of the aircraft has more to do with whether you're hot or cold. So I think it's just a durable, comfy seat. Um, it's easy to clean. And I've noticed that, you know, the, the pants I have to wear are, you know, like a polyester wool blend, uh, you know, typical airline pilot type pant. And I've actually worn some spots in it and such because, you know, my wallet sits in the same spot and you're moving in the seat. And I think it's, and you don't wear out the seat, but you'll wear out your pants. And I think it just, you know, I think that's what's going on there. And it is comfy and you can take stains and, you know, bumps, um, air bumps and coffee and Coke and whatever spills you get on there. So I think that's the only reason for it. And it is iconic more than anything. Right. So, so the funny that, thing that is, would be my, that'd be my simple answer for the whole thing. And it, it, so from an immersion standpoint, if you're used to sitting in a seat like that and you fancy yourself to, you know, really want to go that far that it, you get that sort of an immersion. I, Hey, more power to you. I think, I think it's a great thing. Um, I was thinking like I, when, when I was looking like more research into it, there are claims that, it feels warm in the winter, but that it's cool in the summer. Uh, and it was really funny because uh, in the military, we have a ranger blanket. It's a poncho liner originally from all the way back in Vietnam and probably even before. But the one thing is, if you're in the summer, you're going to take a ranger blanket. And if you're in the winter, you're going to take a ranger blanket because <laughs> if it's very, like if it's like 40 degrees outside and you cover yourself in the field with a ranger blanket, you feel cooler. And in the winter, if it's minus 10 outside and you're in your sleeping bag, then you, you do up your, your ranger blanket and you're just as good. So it's kind of interesting that way. Uh, yeah, that might be something to do with it. Cause I know that wool, you know, at least this is what I learned as a kid, of course, years ago that, you know, wool, when it gets wet, a cotton sock is, you know, terribly nasty when it gets wet, but a wool sock, although it's wet due to sweat or, or, uh, water getting in your shoe it can still with withhold some of its thermal properties so i think that's probably the reason behind that is that that's it'll help keep you cool and keep you warm depending on the situation so that, that probably has some part to do with it as well i noticed that because you're elevated because you're not sitting directly on leather um there seems to be circulation under uh, plus because there's airflow uh you never really sweat into the material so it kind of has that uh, drying effect. It's super comfortable. Like I've been sitting in this as my daily for I think two months now. So I totally understand why. And it, um, like I believe in the chair as far as comfort and as being <laughs> all that, right? And it uh, yeah. it makes sense. It's, it's kind of funny because it reminds me, my grandfather used to have this old hunk of crap station wagon and he had like a sheepskin cover on the chair. And so it's a little bit nostalgic like that because it reminds me of, of him, and of course, he worked for Air Canada as a as a pilot, wrong as a mechanic, uh, during World War II. He was stationed in Egypt, and um, I guess it kind of rubbed off on him, you know, working as a working in that industry. So he also obviously uh, picked up on it and is a believer. So things that I have heard is like the what we spoke about comfort. Uh, high trafficability because uh, you're not technically sitting directly on the leather. As you said, your pants are going to wear faster than the chair because the chair is actually able to move and withstand it. Uh, apparently has some antibacterial uh, to stop, like it never gets stinky. And it's fire retardant on top of that, which is an added benefit. So from my perspective, I totally understand why all the way back in whenever Boeing started to do this, why they would choose this as the covering on the chair because it, it, it literally is the best of everything and the upfront cost when you're talking about a, a billion dollar airplane is irrelevant you know it really doesn't matter so uh, build the chair to last 30 years instead of build a chair to last five and you'll never have to worry about it so i really yeah, do appreciate and, 
your time. Do you have any like other any p parting shots on what uh, what you think about? Well, oddly here? enough, if you use all wool or all cotton, it has to do with the frequency as well. And the cotton and wool are high on the positive frequency uh, spectrum. So there's all kinds of little, I didn't know it was fire retardant and all those other things that you said, but all the things you've mentioned, they, they make perfect sense now. And uh, I just took it for granted and accepted that it was a comfy little seat. <laughs> right. So it, um, I guess there's a lot more, there's a lot more uh, thought there, engineering into it. But it does make sense. Like uh, it's funny. Like you'd think that normally a, f a, a sheep would be flammable, but uh, as it turns out, uh, it's a lot less flammable than any other like po uh, polymer uh, derived te like, technical fabric. We'll call it like something that that's man-made. Right. Uh, obviously, or it's going to burn, but apparently, it puts itself out back to a, an, awesome. am an, uh, an amber rather than a flame. So um, yeah, again, ah. is it uh, is it necessary to have this in your sim pit? No, but if it's what the pilots are really using, and it's what you're trying to achieve is immersion and be you know simulated uh, experience as much as possible, then I totally understand why they offered this as a covering. You know, like the community asked, and and Oliver at Monster Tech was like, "Let me see what I can do." First time I saw it, just as a joke, I uh, I like I told him I said if I get 150 likes on Twitter because of the flying sheep chair. And that's what they decided to name it, by the way. <laughs> just, <laughs> just flying sheep. Uh, I'm like, I'm, I want to do a review. And sure enough, uh, we got the likes. So uh, again, Sven, I really appreciate not only your time today, but the time that you gave us prior. And if you're ever in the neighborhood, or if you think you're going to be in the neighborhood, I would love to set you up with a, a different scenario, uh, a different kind of uh, setup, maybe VR next time. And uh, we'll we'll collaborate in the future or just hang out. So that's it. I'm going to render my observations and recommendations at around $1,000. You could think it's expensive compared to another option. You can't and shouldn't directly compare this to a gaming chair as the build quality, materials, and extras are simply not the same. I've compared locally at this price point for a very good office chair. What you get from the MFC is better than what you can buy. And you buy it once and you buy it for life. This is and has been my daily chair, build quality, comfort and unique features in that more premium price bracket, but still a great value, especially if you intend to use it daily. Great value is achievable when you consider the lifespan and use of the product. So thank you very much for spending your time with me. Please consider sharing the video with a friend or org mate. The comments are there for the rest of you to share with us. Sit and fly safely.